Welcome to the tutorial on numerical on class A output stage. Before we proceed into the numericals, let us look into the design of the class A output stage. Here we have the emitter follower and we have seen in the previous tutorial wherein we have explained the class A output stage as to why this emitter follower is different from the regular emitter follower that we have studied. So the equations for this emitter follower is as follows. The current I that is computed to be equal to VCC minus VCE saturation divided by RL because at any one instant of time any one of the transistors will be turned on and the other will be operating in the cutoff. The value of the resistance R that is connected here is computed as minus VBE minus of minus VCC divided by the current I. Again this is obtained by applying KVL to the base emitter low. To compute the output voltage we have two output voltages wherein the maximum output voltage would be obtained when the transistor Q1 is operating and that will be VCC minus VCE1 saturation whereas the minimum output voltage will be minus VCC plus VCE2 saturation when transistor Q2 will be operating. So the maximum output signal swing is from V out minimum to V out maximum which we have also seen in the transfer characteristics and the maximum emitter current for the transistor Q1 will be equal to 2 times I that is this current. So this design is pertaining to particularly this particular emitter follower. Now let us see how to compute the efficiency and the power dissipation for the class A output stage. These are the design equations pertaining to the power dissipation and computation of efficiency. The bias current I is computed as VCC by RL and the instantaneous power dissipation in the transistor Q1 is computed as PD1 to be equal to VEC1 into IC1 and the continuous power dissipation is equal to VCC multiplied with I and this continuous power dissipation is same for both the transistors. So that is why we have represented as PD1 to be equal to PD2 under the QSEN conditions. Whereas if you are computing the average power dissipation in the transistor Q1 that is computed as PD1 to be equal to half of VCC into I whereas the average power dissipation in Q2 PD2 will be equal to I into VCC. Next is computation of efficiency. To compute efficiency it is computed as load power by supply power PL by PS and the power drawn from the negative supply is VCC into I. Same thing the average power which is drawn from the positive supply will be equal to VCC into I. So both the supplies added together will give you a value of PS that is VCC into I plus VCC into I which gives you a value of PS to be equal to 2 times VCC into I. And the power delivered to the load PL is equal to V out RMS divided by RL. V out RMS is nothing but corresponding to the peak value of output voltage which is V out cap divided by root 2. And since there is a square here so you have a square divided by RL which gives you a value of half of V out cap the whole square divided by RL. So the value of PS and PL have to be substituted here in this particular equation for efficiency to obtain the value. Now coming to the first numerical. The first numerical says that for an emitter follower which is shown in the figure VCC is given, VCE sat is given, VB is given, beta is very high is mentioned. We need to find out the value of R and the largest possible output signal swing for RL equal to 1 kilo ohms and we need to dis determine the resulting output signal swing and the minimum and the maximum emitter currents for Q1. So first to find out the current I, I is computed as VCC minus VC sat divided by RL which gives me a value of 14.8 milliamps. To compute the value of R it is minus VB minus of minus VCC by I which is equal to 0.97 kilo ohms. We need to find out the output signal swing so maximum and the minimum values of output voltage has to be computed. So VCC minus VC1 sat and V out minimum is equal to minus VCC plus VCE2 sat. 
One thing to be noted here is that Vc sat whether it is the first transistor or second transistor, the value will remain the same. So that is why the value has been maintained to be equal to 0.2. So maximum output voltage is equal to 14.8 and, and minimum output voltage is equal to minus 14.8. So the output voltage will swing from plus 14.8 volt to minus 14.8. 8 volt. They have asked in the question to find out the maximum emitter current. The maximum emitter current that has we have seen from the equation for the transistor Q1 is equal to 2 times I. So 2 into I will give you 2 into 14.8 milli which is equal to 29.6 milli amps. Moving on to the second numerical, the numerical says we need to again consider the emitter follower with VCC is equal to 10, I is equal to 100 milliamps, RL is equal to 100 ohms. Find the power that is dissipated in Q1, Q2 under Qsen condition and find the sinusoidal output voltage of maximum possible amplitude. Also find the average power dissipation in Q1 and Q2 and also find the load power. VC is equal to VCC that is equal to 10 volt. Usually VCE will be equal to VCC. We have seen that in the derivation of our efficiency and power dissipation that we are trying to equate VCE to be equal to or less than VCC. So that is why directly we have equated equal to 10 volt. Now they have mentioned in the part of the question to find the power dissipated in Q1 and that too under Qsen conditions. If you remember, if you can recall the equations under Qsen conditions it is PD1 equal to PD2 is equal to VCC into I and that same thing has been substituted and you get it as 1 watt. Next. Part B says for a sinusoidal output voltage of maximum possible amplitude, we have to neglect VC sat. You need to find out the average power dissipation in Q1 and in Q2. So if you can again go back to the equations, average power dissipation in Q1 is PD1 is equal to half of VCC into I, whereas PD2 is equal to I into VCC. So same thing has been done here. Half of VCC into I gives you 0.5 watt. PD2 is equal to VCC into I gives you a value of 1 watt. Finally, load power is equal to V out RMS divided by RL. That is V out cap divided by root 2. V out cap is equal to VCC. That is why directly we have written it as equal to 10 volt. And divided by root 2, the whole square divided by 100 gives me a value of 0 0.5 volt. Watts. The third numerical says for an emitter follower, again the same figure with VCC is equal to 10 volt, I to be equal to 100 milliamps, RL to be equal to 100 ohms. If the output voltage is 8 volt peak sinusoid, find the following. Part A is power delivered to the load. Part B, the average power drawn from the supplies. Part C, the power conversion efficiency. We have to ignore the loss in Q3 and QR. So basically they are not talking about these things. So first one, power delivered to the load. PL is equal to V out cap divided by root 2 the whole square. Now V out cap is mentioned to be equal to 8 volt peak. In this question it is specified that output voltage peak value is 8 volt. So use that value and RL is mentioned. So that gives you a value of power delivered to the load to be equal to 0 0.32 watts. Part B of the question says the average power drawn from the supplies. Now the total power drawn from the supplies is given as PS. But if you are considering the individual power it is VCC into I. So when you are going to add the power delivered from the negative and the positive supply it becomes PS. That is equal to 2 VCC into I. So 2 into 10 because VCC is 10 into 100 milli because I is 100. That gives you a value of 2 watts. Finally power conversion efficiency which is the part C of the question which is equal to PL divided by PS into 100 and that gives you a value of efficiency equal to 16%. If you remember when we had dealt the tutorial of the class A output stage, we had mentioned that though computationally we had obtained an efficiency of 25% but in practical situations the efficiency will lie between 10 to 20% and that is mathematically seen here wherein we have obtained the efficiency of 16%.